Hello, good evening, and welcome to our Wednesday night episode of Brett's Odds on Radio Show. Welcome to my home here in beautiful Lime Bay. Been a busy old day today because this morning, trip to the gym just to try and keep everything going as best I possibly can. And this afternoon, I have spent uh, a lovely afternoon at Forest School. Basically, William, where he goes to school, they've got quite a lot of land and they've got like a forest area. They do once a week forest school, and I am. One of the designated forest school helpers. So I'm very, very lucky indeed. William was brilliant. Loved having his dad there. And I had more cuddles than you can possibly imagine. It's been a lovely day and it's been busy. Unfortunately, made it tricky to get actually any work done. However, here we are. Welcome to Brett's Old Time Radio Show. Thanks for joining me once again for our regular late night visit to those dusty studio archives of Old time radio shows right here at my home on the south coast of the United Kingdom. My phone's going crazy. I can only apologize. I'm going to turn it. I'm going to turn it off now because we are taking some family to the airport in Bristol on Saturday morning. Crazy time. 5.45 a.m. They've got to be there. So it's going to be super early. I'm Brad. I'm your host for our nighttime podcast. Welcome to another episode. I've got Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. They're all called Brett's Old Time Radio Show. I would love it if you could follow me. Feel free to send any feedback to brett at touradate.co.uk and check out our supporter page at patreon.com forward slash Brett's Old Time Radio Show. Now, with it being a Wednesday, of course, it is time for another adventure with Rocky Jordan. This one was first broadcast on the 4th of September, 1949. It's called A Stranger to the Desert. Buy wisely. Buy for flavor. Buy Del Monte. Del Monte, the brand you trust for flavor in so many good foods. Time now for Rocky Jordan. Brought to you today by Del Monte Tomato Products. Not far from the Mosque Sultan Hassan in Cairo stands the Café Tambourine, run by Rocky Jordan. The Café Tambourine, crowded with forgotten men, alive with the babble of many languages. For this is Cairo, where modern adventure and intrigue unfold against the backdrop of antiquity. Del Monte presents Rocky Jordan and this week's story, A Stranger to the Desert. It was like any closing time at the tambourine. The last of the stragglers at the bar had been sent on their way. All my help had cleared up and left. I had just locked the front door and cut the light when my eye caught this figure out through the big front window. He was walking under the dim street light across the intersection with unsteady steps like one filled with arrack. I wouldn't have looked twice except for the way he kept coming, directly toward the tambourine, closer and closer. And without swerving a step, he walked straight through the plate glass window. He fell face down on the window shelf and didn't move. But I did. I was about to drag the man to his feet, but then I knew better. He wasn't drunk at all. He was dead, with a knife between his shoulder blades. Right away, I put in a call for Sam Sabaya of the Cairo police. And before I'd hung up the phone, a crowd had begun to gather. It always happens. They materialize out of nowhere. And in less than ten minutes, Sam appeared on the scene and took over. Let me through, please. Let me through. Greco, disperse the crowd. At once, Captain Sabaya. Move back! Be gone! All of you! Jordan! Jordan, who is this man? Never saw him before, Sam. He just happened to pick my window. Help me turn him over. Sure. Carefully. I trust, Jordan, that you did not become overly curious. Didn't touch him, Sam. He's all yours. His pockets are empty. There seems to be no identification. Somebody made sure of that. Even to tearing the labels off his suit. Yes, so I see. Look at him, Sam. What do you make of it? There's much to be learned, Jordan. The rough hands of a laborer, the weather-beaten skin. I'm noticing something else. His face. Somehow it's different. Yes, he's not a man of the East, that much we know. The oval shape, high cheekbones, sharp nose. Never seen any type like it. As you say, Jordan, even in Cairo, where nationalities come from all over the world, this man is most unusual. The only thing that makes sense is the knife in his back. Yes. 
But for the moment, this strange man remains one of Cairo's unknown dead. That's all there is? Certainly not, Jordan. A routine check with the Canadian consul today informed me that a Dr. Willoughby, a noted anthropologist, arrived two weeks ago for study at the Cairo University. Oh, he could help. I shall have the body removed to the morgue and call in Dr. Willoughby for consultation. You mind if I join you? On the contrary, Jordan. Come along. We went to police headquarters. In about an hour, a white-thatched, energetic little man arrived and introduced himself as Dr. Willoughby. He eyed us sharply as Sam took us down into the morgue. Then we stood looking at the lifeless man. Observe now, Dr. Willoughby. Ah, yes, now we shall see, now we shall see. You will doubtless realize why we were puzzled by this man. In a moment, please. Mm. Well, well proportioned, short. But the face, Doctor. Ah, yes, yes, broad, oval, prominent cheekbones, long, narrow nose. Most incredible, most incredible. Now, then you can tell us. And there, as I thought, traces of the epicanthic fold. Mind explaining that? The Mongolian fold on the eyelids. I cannot get over it, gentlemen. Indeed, Dr. Willoughby. And uh, what manner of man is this? Surely a stranger to the desert, Captain Sabaya. Well, let's have it. What is he? What is he, Mr. Jordan? This man is an Eskimo. A, a, Eski- in Eskimo? Eskimo, did you say? Mr. Jordan, indeed I did. A test, if you please, the uh, coarse black hair, the light brown of the body, and the copper color of the cheeks. Nevertheless, Doctor... This man is truly an Eskimo. What would an Eskimo be doing in Cairo? Aha, uh-huh, Mr. Jordan. That is a question I must ask of you. Well, we could have asked questions like that for the rest of the night without any answers. Instead, I went back to the tambourine. But this business of an Eskimo in Egypt had me wondering, especially when he falls through my window with a knife in his back. Well, I had to make some arrangements to get my front window boarded up, and after that, I get some sleep. The next morning, I just opened up and was waiting for the help to show when in walked two more strange people. About five steps behind the first walked a big-robed Yemenite. And in the lead, hair stacked high in her head above slanting eyes and a sleek figure and jeweled platform shoes was a woman. Her heavy perfume came in way ahead of her. She was very delicate and small, and in her hand was a very delicate and small gun. Where is it, Mr. Jordan? Where's what, lady? Give a civil reply, America. Silence, Jabu. I speak of the money, Mr. Jordan. Oh, sure, the, the money. I think you know what I'm talking about. Where is it? Any special amount? All of it. Ten thousand pounds. Forty thousand dollars to you in... Enough, Jabu. I am speaking. Your command, my lady. Quickly now, Mr. Jordan. Look, uh, supposing we put away the artillery, huh? I'll sit down, have a nice cool drink. You still pretend not to know what I'm talking about? It happens, I don't. We shall find out. Jabu, step around me. Search him thoroughly. With the greatest of pleasure. You got big hands, Jabu, but keep them off of me. I can use them well, Jordan. Only search him, Jabu. He's covered with my gun. Mm. There is only the pound note in his wallet, my lady. Try the cash register, then. Keep looking. Listen, if you're hunting for 40,000 around here, give it up. Here is the bank book, my lady, under the counter. Bring it to me, Jabu. Then step back. No luck again, lady. I haven't put money like that in the bank. Oh, I see. But there are many places to hide money. Perhaps Jabu must not be so gentle. My way is best. Such as this, Jordan. Hey. Quite a man, Jabu, with your lady holding a gun. I do as my lady commands. Even a slipping a knife in somebody's back? Guard your words. Kill! <laughs> Enough, Jabu. Perhaps Mr. Jordan wishes time to consider the error of his way. And I take it you'll be back. Perhaps. In the meantime, you might also ponder on how short life can be. So very short, Fendi. Come now, Jabu. Follow behind. She kept the tiny gun in her tiny hand and walked out the door with Jabu the correct distance behind. I held it a second and got to the door just in time to see their car around the corner of block down and disappear. It was all too much on schedule. I couldn't say why, but somehow I knew it was all tied up. This Yemenite and his lady and the Eskimo in Cairo. <laughs> Del Monte Foods is presenting tonight's adventure with Rocky Jordan. (laughs) 
Let's drop in on the Tyler family and listen to a little family conference going on in the kitchen. You know, dear, I want to have something special when Barbara and Tom come over for dinner tomorrow. Oh, shucks. I know Tom will go for anything you fix, so don't go to a lot of bother. Well... Say, I know. Why not start off with some ice-cold tomato juice? That's a good idea. Del Monte tomato juice, the perfect way to start a meal. How right you are, Mrs. Tyler. Del Monte tomato juice makes a perfect appetizer. Nothing could be easier to serve, yet it gives a special extra lift to meals. That's because... Del Monte tomato juice is fresh tasting. Del Monte tomato juice is natural tasting. Del Monte tomato juice is refreshing. Fresh tasting, natural tasting, and refreshing. Yes, that's a perfect description of Del Monte tomato juice. That fresh, sunny flavor, that sparkling, natural taste which comes from the very best field-ripened tomatoes all adds up to real, deep-down, satisfying refreshment. Keep several cans of Del Monte tomato juice in the refrigerator. You'll find they come in mighty handy. And now we take you back to Cairo and tonight's Rocky Jordan story, A Stranger to the Desert. It all began when an Eskimo, yes, I said an Eskimo, fell through my front tambourine window with a knife in his back. And it figured the recent visit from the perfume doll and her boy Jabu connected up. That was a problem Sam Sabaya could have, so right away I put in a call for him at headquarters. Cairo Police. Greco speaking. Hello, Greco. This is for Sam. Put him on. And who is this speaking? Jordan. You know me. Where's Sam, Greco? Mr. Jordan, it happens that Captain Sabaya is not in. Where is he? I want to talk to him. Captain Sabaya is at the present uh, attending an important meeting in Alexandria with the Minister of Internal Security. I am personally taking over his cases. Well, then you can tell me if there's anything new on the killing of the stranger. Please, be specific. The Eskimo, Greco. There seems to be nothing new. Is that all now? And then I got something to report. Now, get this, Greco. Be brief, Mr. Jordan. Can you not see... Listen. Very well. A couple of people just came into the tambourine, roughed me up looking for $40,000 they think I have. I don't know what it's all about, but I think it fits with the Eskimo killing. You lean no Now, here's a description. One was a girl... Small, Eurasian, loaded with lots of perfume and a pearl handle revolver. I didn't get her name, but the man... You listening? Mr. Jordan, must I again remind you that my time is limited? His name was Jabu. Duly noted, duly noted. You gonna do something about it, Gregor? If that completes your report... Oh, one more thing. They said they'd be back. Duly noted, Mr. Jordan. Ah. Well, with people punching at me, I couldn't wait around for Greco or anybody. For a lot of reasons now, I had to know how and why a lonely Eskimo came to Cairo. A man that unusual shouldn't be too hard to trace, so I rung up a few hotels but got no help. Then I hired a taxi and began making the rounds in person. I tried my friend Archie at Shepherd's. Eskimo? Oh, I say, Rocky. You Americans have such a quaint sense of humor. <laughs> Eskimo, indeed. <laughs> Next, I taxied on down the Sharia Suleiman Pasha and stopped at the Villa Victoria. A buxom lady held sway behind the desk. My good man, there are no Eskimos here, but you will find the bar on the lower floor. Good day. After that, I took a chance at the Acropolis Hotel. The desk clerk was very uncooperative. Uh, no, mister, we don't have Eskimos. And that goes for seals, polar bears, and walruses. Now get out with your bum jokes before I call the cops. I went on trying a few of the smaller hotels. Maybe I was getting tired, but so was somebody else I noticed following me. It was a third-rate tailing job, so I let him through the Musky Bazaar, and at the right spot, ducked around a corner. As he came by, I grabbed him and yanked him into an alley. Let me go uh, at once, monsieur. What's it about, mister? I was only walking this way. Too close behind. Now, what do you want? Who are you? André Jean Deux. It means nothing to you. Now, let me decide. Why are you following me? I told you I was only... Uh, I can keep trying. I do not wish to fight with you, Monsieur Jordan. So you know the name, too. Okay, from the beginning. What's your business? Yeah. I am a pilot, new to Cairo. I landed my cargo plane at the airport here last evening. Now, Monsieur, I must... Not yet, Andre. Where are you from? Shoal Abar, Newfoundland. Yeah. Who else was aboard the plane? An Eskimo, maybe? That is right. He come here with me. Uh, let's hear all about him. Well, I, I do not know his true name. Everyone called him Johnny Silkskin. He was well known in Newfoundland as a whaler. Why'd he come to Cairo? Uh, 
I had my plane to transport a cargo for a delivery here. He came as a representative of a community of his people. Cargo what? Monsieur, I do not know. Who killed him, Andre? And why? I also wish to know. He left the plane at the airport last evening saying that he would come into Cairo to pick up his money. Uh, when did you see him again? Never. He was to return and we would immediately take off for Newfoundland. I waited there for him all night and this morning I read in the paper of his death at your cafe, Monsieur Job. And you thought telling me he'd get some answers? Monsieur, Cairo is a strange town. I could not be sure. How about I... that cargo? You still say you didn't know what it was? All he said was that his people had been fleeced before. Besides, he was paying good money, so why should I ask? Sure. Any idea about it? Well, uh, I'll confess that while he was sleeping, I opened one of his cases. And what the stuff inside looked like? Uh, it was solid, rather fatty, streaked with black like marble, you might say. I recall a sweet, earthy odor. How much of the stuff was it? It weighed in at 2,000 pounds. Okay. Where's the stuff now? I do not know, monsieur. After I make my report at the airport office, I went back to the plane. A truck came and took the cases away. I do not know where. Look, uh, you know my address. Where do I find you? I'm at the Caliph house, monsieur. Now take my advice and go back there, Henri. Then uh, you suspect there is danger? Why not? They kill once, they can kill again. I had something about the Eskimo now, but still no idea why he was killed. I had a hunch what the cargo was, but just to make sure, I decided to see Dr. Willoughby again. I talked with a consul and learned the doctor was living out near the university. When I got there, his room was stacked with all sorts of books. He seemed real glad to see me. Ah, oh, Mr. Jordan, come in, come in. Ah, sorry to bother you again, oh, Dr. Willoughby. Oh, but... Mr. I presume your call is about the stranger who lies in the morgue. Yes, I have a few questions. As you see, I've been doing a little reading on the subject. Most unusual, unusual. Yeah, well, uh, this is something yeah, else. Have a moment, Mr. Jordan, to set your mind at rest. Mm -hmm. A moment. Mm -hmm. Ah, here we are. On the subject of the epicantic fold. Absolute proof that the man is an Eskimo. Well, it happens I know all about him, Dr. Willoughby. He is an Eskimo from Newfoundland. He was a whaler. Splendid, splendid. How did you learn? I've been talking to the pilot who brought him, him and the cargo to Cairo. Oh, cargo, indeed. Of what sort? Well, the pilot wasn't sure. He described it as uh, solid, fatty, blackish in appearance with a sweet, earthy smell. Could it be ambergris? What? It might very well be. What do you know of? Uh, only that it comes from Wales, used in making perfumes, isn't it? You are quite correct. It is vitally necessary for the making of certain perfumes of the East. Yeah, and Cairo should be a good market. Any idea what it's worth? Oh, quite valuable and increasingly rare. Certain firms are frantic to get it. A pound is worth $20 or so. $20? That much ambergris would come mm, to about... Let me see, 2,000 pounds, that would come to $40,000 American. $40,000, exactly. I heard that figure once before today. You did? Yeah, Dame was at my cafe this morning looking for 40,000. A remarkable coincidence, Mr. John. Yes, isn't it? Well, thanks, Doctor. That's all I wanted to know. It was enough for me. Maybe a few pieces didn't fit yet, but the police could take it from there and finish up. After all, I just run a cafe. So I went directly from Dr. Willoughby's place to headquarters. Greco was seated behind Sam Sabaya's desk when I walked in. All at once, he got very busy. I waited him out, and he finally looked up. You again, Mr. Jordan. I'm quite busy. Well, I'm saving you some work, Greco. You can clean it up quick now. Clean it up? There are important matters on my mind. They're killing Greco in my cafe last night. Oh, yes. You will leave that in my hands. That mean you got the two carriages I called you about this morning? In good time, Mr. Jordan, in good time. Just what does this mean, Greco? You're doing something about this or not? The Cairo police need hardly answer to you. You'll answer to a lot of people. You will keep away from the fires. It is an order. In good time, Greco. Mr. Jordan, I have given you an order. Come away from there. I'm just having a look at the Eskimo folder. Give it to me at once. Sure. Have a look at it, Greco. Not a thing in here since Sabaya's report last night. What about it? That means just one thing. You haven't done anything and you don't intend to do anything about a murder. A man knifed in the streets of Cairo. And why should I, Mr. Jordan? He's only an Eskimo, a stranger. Sure, only a stranger with no relatives or friends to press for him. No counsel to concern itself with his behalf. Guard your words, Mr. Jordan. What's the matter with you, Greco? Does it always take public opinion? Danger of a few votes cast the wrong way? Or maybe solving a poor Eskimo killing doesn't carry a promotion. Enough, Mr. Jordan. You will go now or I shall call the guards. Don't bother yourself, Greco, about anything. I'll handle it myself. It looked like it was all up to me. When I got back to the tambourine, there'd been a call from Andre, the pilot, wanting to see me right away. So I hurried to the caliph house. 
His room was on the third floor rear, and I went up. I found it, but I didn't have to knock. The door was already open. I took two steps in and stopped. I stood looking down at the lifeless figure of André Jando. My eyes didn't tell me anything, but my nose did. It was the heavy aroma of strong perfume, like I'd smelled before that day. My hand was on the knob of the open door, and suddenly I slammed it back to the wall. Ah, you pen, lady. Toss out the gun. The gun first. Make it quick. That's better. Now, come on out. You are very rude, Mr. Jodo. Just like your muscle man. Why didn't you send Jabu to do this? Please let me explain. All right. Tell me about Andre. I did not kill this man. Sure you didn't. It is true. When I got here, he was dead. Before I could leave, I had you coming and hid behind the door. That's an old story. I've heard it before. I tell you, I did not shoot him. My gun was not fired. Look for yourself. Yeah. You believe me now? Maybe. Just who are you, lady? My name is Zora Harad. I own a perfume company in Calcutta. Not much, checks. What are you after, Zora? The money that is mine. Well, let's have the rest. The Eskimo wrote me from Newfoundland that he was bringing a ton of ambergris to Cairo for sale. He arrived last night, and by previous arrangement, he came to my hotel. We made a verbal contract for the purchase. Forty thousand dollars. You paid cash? He was suspicious, would have it no other way. I gave him the money, he left, and I sent Jabu to take the cargo to my warehouse. Then, Mr. Jordan. Yeah? What then? I learned that the Eskimo had received a higher offer from the All Eastern Perfume Company. And a short time later, Jabu called to tell me that the cases he took from the plane were empty. You're trying to tell me Johnny Sealskin swindled you? I am sure of it. He took the money, then turned around and sold my ambergris to the All Eastern Company. So you killed him? I did not kill him. Perhaps I would have, with the chance. Forty thousand dollars is a great deal of money. You still think I've got it? I gave it to him. He was found at your cafe, and it was gone. You got it all wrong, Zora. Have I, Mr. Jordan? I didn't take your money, and Johnny didn't sell to all Easton. But I know who did. I gave back the gun and sent Zora to a hotel to wait. And right away, I hunted up the All Eastern Perfume Company down in the modern Shariazaki. I waited there around by the loading dock for a long time. It was shortly after the Muezzin's last call when a truck slowed at the entrance and turned in. I hopped down behind and rode it to the dock. A man got out and went to a door. Somebody let him in and was careless with the lock. I counted three and followed. It was a large, half-lit room. There were all sorts of bottles along the wall. I noticed several low, glass-covered perfume processing vats sunk in the floor, each with its own name. Desert Madness, Oriental Mist, Torrid Love, and so on. Two men went into a lighted office at the far end. I picked a good shadow just outside and listened. It was a great risk. I came all the way. Hold it. I'm not interested in where you got the hamburger, or how. I'm just willing to buy it. You have the money? Yes, all of it. Here. 45000 Now take it and get out of here. Step back way. I don't want to be seen with you. Yes. Yes, I will go. How's the deal, Willoughby? Uh, who is that? Who are you? You know me, Dr. Willoughby. Uh, Joe, how did you get here? That all that bothers you? Don't come any closer. Yeah? Why so nervous? You hold the gun. Stay by the wall. Keep your hands up. Now, what do you want? $45,000. I don't know what you're talking about. So I have to spell it out, eh? You're from Canada by way of Newfoundland, right? You do not frighten me. Why do you keep stepping back? Yeah, I got it from the Canadian consul. So you knew of the ambergris shipment, came ahead into Cairo posing as a big professor. Did I, Jordan? You took the stuff from the plane while the pilot was checking in, replacing it with empty cases. It's easy to get helpers around Cairo. I can see you know too much. You could have just delivered the stuff here and gotten by, only that wasn't enough. You had to kill Johnny Sealskin for his money and the pilot, too, when he got out of you somehow. Very well, Jordan. But your lips will be sealed forever. His trembling hand came up with a gun. My raised hand had a bottle off a shelf, and I threw it. My throw deflected his shot, but he held the gun still backing up. 
was about to aim again when his heel caught a perfume vat's edge and he fell back. I got over to make sure he dropped the gun. As I bent over, his flailing hands grabbed my wrist, and all at once I was in on top of him. Then we were splashing around in a vat full of desert madness. I stayed on top and held his head under just long enough. And I dragged him out of the perfume stuff and dumped him on the floor. That's when I knew Dr. Willoughby and I would never be the same again. In just a moment, Rocky Jordan returns to conclude tonight's story. You know, some folks insist on doing things the hard way, but not Mrs. Collins. She has the perfect answer when it comes to hot weather meals. But let's hear her tell about it. Why, it's very simple. I just prepare light meals, sometimes just cold cuts or cold roast beef. And I keep a bottle of Del Monte catsup handy on the table. It has such a wonderful, marvelous flavor, I can depend on it to perk up any meal. But just the other day, for instance, my husband wandered in from the backyard. Phew. Oh, it's been such a warm day today, honey. Let's just have something light for dinner. Oh, I'm way ahead of you, darling. The dinner's ready now. Some crisp salad, iced coffee, cold roast beef, and your favorite Del Monte catsup. Oh, swell. You wonderful woman, you. I can always count on you to treat me right. And there you have it, Mrs. Collins' recipe for a cool meal on a hot day. And the point to remember is Del Monte catsup. Mmm, say, that zesty, lively, rich tomato flavor really perks up those light meals. And it makes planning summertime meals downright easy. Think of meatloaf or baked beans, franks, or cold roast with Del Monte catsup poured over just the way you like. Then, think of flavor. Rich, tangy tomato flavor that makes you want some more. That's right, you're thinking of Del Monte. So, next time you buy catsup, buy Del Monte. And it won't be long before you'll be saying, just like Mrs. Collins does. I always have a bottle of Del Monte catsup handy. It has such marvelous flavor. Back now to Rocky Jordan. Well, I worked on Dr. Willoughby till he came around. And I took him outside, put him in the truck, and in another half hour, we pulled up at police headquarters. They took over the ambergris cargo, and after giving Willoughby a shower and a change of clothes, they put him in a cell. I was counting on another round with Greco about then, but was happy to see Sabaya back. As I sat down in his office, I noticed Sam leaning back in his chair. Jordan, <coughs> <coughs> would you kindly open that window? Oh, glad to, Sam. Mm. Hey, uh, how was the trip to Alexandria? You're quite pleasant, thank you. Uh, uh, Jordan. Yeah? What did you say you fell into? Uh, desert madness. <laughs> they say it does things to you. Desert madness. Uh, <clears throat> I quite agree. Now, about this Zora Harad, you suggest that neither she nor Jahabu had anything to do with the killing. That's right. She was just trying to get her money back. I see. <clears throat> Jordan, would you uh, please m move back a little? Is this uh, it's all right, Sam? Yes, yes. Now, to continue... Oh, by the way, uh, Greco could have handled this if he'd been on the job. Well, do not condemn Greco too much. There are certain people who must take orders. He does that very well. Anyhow, Willoughby played it smart to a point. He knew enough about anthropology to come to Cairo posing as an authority. Yet he hardly expected to be called in on this case. No, but the safest thing was to play it straight. Nobody would suspect him. His only trouble was he knew too much about ambergris. Oh, and how so? Well, it's value, for example. That's what tripped him up. Without my telling him, he knew exactly how much ambergris came in on that plane. Two thousand pounds. <coughs> Desert madness. <coughs> uh, Jordan, would you do me a favor? Sure, Sam, anything. Name uh, it. Kindly return to the tambourine and give me the rest of your statement by telephone. the finest in tomato flavor. Enjoy the whole family of Del Monte tomato products. Del Monte catsup and chili sauce. Del Monte tomato sauce and canned tomato. And Del Monte tomato juice. Remember, buy wisely. Buy for flavor. Buy Del Monte. 
Del Monte, the brand you trust for flavor in so many good foods. Rocky Jordan, written by Larry Roman and Gomer Cool, stars Jack Moyles in the title role with Jay Novello as Sam Sabaya and is produced and directed by Cliff Howell with original music composed and conducted by Richard Arant. Remember, you have a date next week at the Cafe Tambourine run by Rocky Jordan. Same time, same station. And the story is Adventure with Andrea. For the best peaches and cream you ever ate, buy Del Monte peaches, sliced or halved. Yes, whenever you want ripe, mellow, truly delicious peaches, look for the brand that puts flavor first, Del Monte. Larry Thor speaking. Rocky Jordan is presented over CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. Welcome back. Hope you enjoyed our latest adventure with Rocky Jordan. And don't forget, tomorrow it's... Tales of the Texas Rangers going live from 5 p.m. GMT. As I mentioned earlier, we've got a supporter page, patreon.com forward slash Brett's Old Time Radio Show. And please do consider sponsoring us for the big show. If you know anyone who would like to sponsor the show, or if you'd like to sponsor the show, then please drop us a line, brett at tourdate.co.uk. We'd love to have you on board. Thanks for listening. I'll be with you seven days a week, each and every week, and I'll see you tomorrow at Brett's Old Time Radio Show. Love you. Bye.